Namaste. Namaste. On this occasion of uh, you know Rama Pratishthapana and uh, looking at this process of uh, you know Indika's uh, invitation for us to talk about Rama, I thought uh, we could look at uh, Rama as an internal process of looking at you know our inner sadhana and how Ramayana gives us these various aspects to look at that. Uh, one of the things I have always been intrigued is, uh, you know, we say that for us, for our own inner progress, there are six ripus or shad ripus, as we call it. Kama, Krodha, Lobha, Moha, Mada, Matsarya. And uh, I think these come in our way of even enjoying, looking at, or even touching the essence of Rama itself. Yeah. And so, today we, we thought we will talk about that because we have explored this in many ways. And some of the Ramayana stories which really touch upon this, of how people there who are so close to Rama also couldn't see him because one of these came in their way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts are, okay? These are, for me, like six different screens that come in front of us. They are mutually independent. Mm. They are also connected with each other, not necessarily one after another. And it can click anytime. And that's good mm. enough to keep us away from the divine within self. Yeah, true. So when we look at Moha, what stories come to your mind? What characters? The moment Moha comes... Uh, as a point to be discussed, Putra Moha comes up first in Ramayana. Mm. You know, if Putra Moha was not there, the whole Ramayana story may not exist. <laughs> True. While he had four Putras, Dasharatha was completely blinded with Rama. And while in some places Ramayana, in Ramayana, it says Kaike really loved Rama. Mm. But that love was how deep mm. and how her Putra Moha can uh, tr get triggered by somebody coming and just clicking something for her. So Putra Moha, I mean, the deep dwellings of certain types within me, certain patterns within me can be triggered just by Mantara coming and talking something about it. Although mm. it is a some kind of a love that is existing for Rama, this deep moha within for Bharata can be triggered anytime. And Dasharatha, his moha was so deep that he didn't allow Rama to go when Vishwamitra came and asked him. Knowing that this was a very capable son and who's asking after all, Vishwamitra is asking. No, he didn't yeah. trust Rama, neither did he trust Dasharatha. I'm sorry, uh, Vishwamitra. Then, when he wanted to do the coronation, he had all but, uh, you know, his guru. Yeah, Vasishta's present. Vasishta. He had Vasishta by the side of him. But he didn't ask him when to do, is it a good time? Is it the best time for all of us to do? Is it going to bring the best for the country? Nothing. He, he had so much of moha that next day it had to be and that completely changes the course, uh, of, the course of the story for Dasharatha and the rest of the people in Ayodhya. Yeah, true. And while he is not able to see because of moha, you know that every Rakshasa approaches Rama with the sense of Krodha and Mada. Whether it is Tataka, whether it is Karadushana, you know, whether it is Viradha, they're almost blinded by their own anger and a sense of uh, power, a sense of conquering. Yeah, and they, they know that each of this, like Maricha says, that each of his bana is one arrow is enough to throw us so far. Mm -hmm. yeah. So having known that and knowing this power and 
time and again in Ramayana, it comes the saying that, you know, uh, he's supposed to be Vishnu Rupa, Narayana Rupa who's come. But you know, the inability to see the divine presence or even feel that divine presence when it is right in front of you. And they get so enamored, so caught up with their own Krodha that it leads them to such a downfall. Right? Time and again, attacking them, uh, you know, creating problems. Yeah. Yeah. Maricha, when you pick the uh, name of Maricha, he didn't want to get killed by Ravana. Hmm. He wanted to get killed by Rama. And when you look at that part of the part of the story, it looks like he is an attained soul kind of thing. But ultimately, he'll still go and call out Rama. That yeah. inner thing comes up precipitating one time or the other, where he's not able to touch the Rama within. Yeah. Because anyway, he's going to get killed. Ravana is not going to come and kill him. Mm. He could have called, you know, just silently got killed instead of calling out Rama at that point of time. Yeah. Uh, he calls out Lakshmana at that point. And Sita. Yeah. Be seating. Yeah. So, because somewhere, I guess, if deep inside, if a Krodha, if a Mada, these are somewhere still there, those seeds are there. Uh, there is a very uh, great poet uh, called uh, DV, uh, DVG in Canada who has yes. written something called as Mankuti Manakaga, where he says, <coughs> These hooks are still inside us. Mm -hmm. And that's why when somebody throws a rope, we get caught. So the instances in our life come up and we get caught with these hooks. If the hook is still there, then it gets caught. Right? So even at the last moment, Maricha couldn't... I mean, we can call it a divine play. But if you look at the just the character who had talked about Rama so well just a few chapters ago, goes back and does what Ravana's bidding is. Yeah. You know? So how much is that own uh, vasanas which get caught with that? And right. how much of conviction is there? Yeah. And how long it's can you hold on to that false conviction own, that you may think? Yeah, in his own sadhana also over Ravana. so many years. Right? Another one person who if you look at the next character of the Lobha, I think for me it is always uh, uh, Vali. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Vali is avarice to just capture everything. Yeah. Right? He's supposed to have had a boon of that he will get the, half the energy of the next, you know, his opponent also. Right? We, we, which yes. for me is a denotion of um, ways of we capturing things. Yeah. Uh, I mean, today I think, which is very evident in all commercial uh, advertisements, right? We want to have more and more of things, capture more, get more, more enjoyment, more. So everything becomes more, more, more. And in that kind of a scenario, are we really able to touch the deeper space, which is beautiful, which is, do we really enjoy beauty for its own sake? You know, yeah. right? And so, for me, Vali is also somebody who, who of course, you know, he doesn't see Rama till he's killed. But in essence, that whole aspect of inability to really see beauty within beauty for what it is there right capturing itself becomes um expanding myself becomes a need rather than contentment you know for me rama is also a denotion of being content with where you are right when that is not there it becomes a how much will you capture how much will you go after bhoga Right. One is to deserve it. One is to enjoy it. Yeah. If you have so much that you can't even feel it and perceive it, how can you ever enjoy it? Mm. And you still are looking to gather more than to <laughs> have what you have and enjoy it. Yeah. 
just moving on to moving on to you know matsaryan hmm it is a hilarious situation with shorpanaka as we see how she plays all the games she is ugly looking fat and what not but she is so jealous and she is able to keep playing around to somehow prove that her her jealousy is satis- you know is justified you know first she comes in the form of a beauty and then she looks at sita who is even more beautiful but finds one or the other way to justify that is not beautiful enough as compared mm. to herself how she is presenting and then she can twist and turn the story to somehow get what she wants mm. in the form of you know if rama is not there okay lakshmana if lakshmana is not there once again rama whichever way somehow the thirst for the jealousy has to be quenched by her own games that she brings out uh hindsight it is hilarious but when you are right there it's not so and when i am feeling so at a particular instance it completely blinds me mm. that's so uh any any one of these and how it will blind me to see the truth to see the ramyam to see rama is mm. thing uh really to be dwelled upon yeah i think my jealousy can be fun for others but when i am going through jealousy it is not you know it burns say and finally i think for me ram you know ramayana story is also about um just the aspect of looking at karma you know how do you give in to desire and that juxtaposition is is between rama and ravana is beautiful isn't it this person Absolutely. ravana who desires everything conquers everything and has has this ability to capture anything yeah while rama is so content in in what life offers to him and makes the best out of it it almost comes as his there is no desire which drives him or is there is no desire which can manipulate or you know compel him he is not subservient to any desire yeah and how does he look at karma throughout the ramayana the references are there that even when they were in vanaprastha that is you know 14 years rama and sita is to sleep with the bow in between you know that kind of a, you know brahmacharya that you know sadhana towards it and here is a villain or a you know juxtaposition of an asura who is so strongly looking at how do we capture everything and when he looks at you know sita the more purest pristine form he wants to capture that also and what does that mean yeah whenever i am reminded of the shadrupus i also get in touch with sri rajagopalachari's tamil composition mm. kurayunu minlai marai murthi kanna mm. in one of the lines in the song he says tirayin pin nirkindrai kanna tirayin pin nirkindrai kanna you are you are standing behind those veils and the veils for me are the kama krodha lobha moha you know mm. if one of those veils or several of those veils cover me up that is how far away from touching my rama within mm. so as we move towards uh, you know the, the prana pratishta in ayodhya i think we all we play is that with the prana pratishta these veils also start disappearing they start submerging so that we can really feel and see the presence and the and essence the, of rama and the essence of rama yeah jai shri ram jai shri ram